overview of the data sharing and data management principles. Uh, I want to point out that uh, this uh, presentation was done with Bob Downs, who uh, works at Season and, and CDAC. He's a senior digital archivist, also a member of the Core Trust SEAL board. Um, and he had been involved with the GEOS Evolve effort, which had focused on the data management principles. Uh, so with that intro, let me dive in. Um, won't go into the longer history of the data sharing principles, which, as I mentioned, started with the first uh, GEO implementation plan in 2005. Um, but through a lot of efforts over the years uh, by the data sharing working group and others, uh, uh, GEO uh, updated the data sharing principles in 2015 in Mexico City, uh, in which it uh, recognized that uh, although the state original data sharing principles were ahead of their time back in 2005, it was important for GEO to stay ahead of the curve and recognize that um, the world has changed. Uh, many uh, international organizations and governments recognize the value of things like open government data, and that GEO should update its um, principles to uh, really recognize first, of course, the benefits arising from open sharing of data information, knowledge, products, and services, uh, but also that data should be open by default. That is, uh, the assumption would be that data entering into, uh, to be part of the, of GEOS, a global earth observing system of systems, ought to be uh, assumed to be open unless uh, the contributor uh, specified uh, restrictions or charges or other conditions. So that's the first principle. Uh, the second principle, of course, being a voluntary intergovernmental organization, uh, GEO is not like a treaty. It's not like a UN organization. Uh, you know, uh, we can't escape the idea that international instruments, national policies, and legislations do supersede uh, uh, things like uh, open sharing of data where it's necessary. And of course, as scientists, we recognize there are certain areas in which data sharing, uh, fully open data sharing, uh, isn't always possible because of things like uh, uh, privacy and and uh, security concerns. Um, so principle two continues that, but it also uh, emphasizes the need for minimizing those restrictions and limiting uh, uh, the cost of reproduction and distribution. And finally, the third principle, which carried over from the first uh, from the first set, was that uh, minimum time delay was important. That that um, getting data out quickly, uh, not necessarily reserving time for a scientific publication, for example, um, was important. So the the other half of this is uh, Geo's effort to. Uh, recognize and provide principles and guidelines related to data management. Uh, these evolved uh, uh, really in the last five, six years. Um, and I think uh, the uh, group that developed this uh, uh, did a very nice job of clarifying, grouping, and, and uh, actually labeling the different uh, data management principles. I'll go through them very quickly in a minute. But, um, you know, I think it's important to recognize that these uh, have been accepted by GEO members and participating organizations when they join GEO. Uh, but of course, uh, GEO, as I said, is, is voluntary. It can't impose policies or procedures. It can only make recommendations, uh, develop guidelines, and encourage uh, compliance uh, to the extent that it makes sense. Um, so there is a, a brand new uh, joint data sharing data management working group that was formed at the uh, Canberra Plenary and Ministerial uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's still being reformed, but uh, many of the 
earlier participants are are going to continue, but uh, as I'll say at the end, we, we're looking for new participants. So very quickly, uh, uh, discoverability obviously is a key issue and metadata is essential to that. Um, I, I don't think for this group I have to go into it uh, in much detail, but uh, certainly one issue is if there are data rights issues, licenses that that should be indicated in the in the discovery metadata. Uh, online access, kind of a no-brainer, uh, but uh, encouraging not just download, but uh, increased use of services uh, using uh, open standards. Uh, I'll note, of course, that OGC is one of the co-organizers of this and, and has been very supportive of, of these types of um, approaches. Uh, usability includes three principles. Uh, and again, I won't go in great detail, but uh, to make data usable, obviously, uh, they have to be uh, reasonably and uh, structured. Uh, there has to be good documentation. Uh, we really uh, need to ensure traceability of data and uh, have uh, uh, clear and transparent quality control. Again, I think once stated, these are pretty pretty um, obvious, but getting these and, and starting to articulate um, how best to achieve these principles is, is part of the challenge. Uh, preservation uh, has two uh, principles um, that, of course, one wants to ensure that data isn't lost and that procedures are there to to um, support that, and that also the important data and and metadata um, has to be verified and and validated to make sure that they're actually um, um, accurate and authentic and reliable. Then finally, uh, somewhat separate from preservation is this idea of curation, and that. Uh, uh, data isn't, you know, necessarily just a static thing that you stick on the shelf, that it requires review, that uh, certainly from the scientific community's viewpoint, reprocessing is, is key. Um, and then, of course, if you have uh, different versions and, and good version control and traceability, you really need persistent identifiers. Um, so those are the 10 uh, uh, principles. Um, as you can see, for somewhat historical reasons, the data sharing principles and the data management principles were developed in parallel within GEO, and uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, definitely overlap in what they discuss. Uh, I would say the principles to get more at some of the policy approaches of the geo community. And um, the DMP does focus more on the um, mechanics or the, the implementation of good data stewardship. Uh, so this is just a, a little bit of a illustration of, of the correspondence. I, I won't go into it too, in too much detail, but if you have questions, um, uh, I, we can answer that. Actually, Bob Downs, I think, is on the call, so I may also be able to help help with responding to questions. Uh, so let me just conclude. The Data Sharing and Data Management Working Group has a new set of terms of reference that were approved by the program board and by plenary uh, by virtue of being in the new work plan. I'm not going to go into gory detail, but uh, uh, it does cover the general issues of what's happening internationally on open data. Uh, it, uh, uh, there is uh, interest in helping to the geo community to document the value of the data being open. Uh, there's been uh, activities related to how to translate the uh, work at the international level to countries that are uh, still trying to uh, encourage open access within their countries um, and look at interoperability and best 
practices and issues like metrics. So it's a large agenda. Uh, the group is still trying to formulate priorities. There is a geo site about open EO data. Uh, I, I mean, a, a page, set of pages on the geo website, which is there. And you'll find links to some of the previous documents that uh, the data sharing and data management group has uh, prepared in the past. Since GEO is voluntary, um, uh, the member governments uh, don't uh, feel that it can uh, uh, set policies that where the, the implication of the term policy is that members are obligated to uh, uh, conform with the policies. And uh, so uh, the governments were fine with principles that are, of course, aspirational and all the members can aspire to adhere to the principles. And and oddly, they're, they're fine with uh, guidelines and procedures that are established because, again, a country can can uh, follow the guidelines or follow procedures or not and uh, contribute to geo and geos what they want uh, but if but we were very explicitly told uh, you know don't talk about policy because governments will read that as uh, a prescription coming from a group that you know doesn't have the status of the UN or a treaty where governments had actually made an agreement to abide by something. And, and so that's the distinction that we've had to be careful to make um, for the last 15 years. I think the availability is up to the providers. Um, I think what the principles um, uh, argue for is that all versions have a persistent identifier so that you can see that there's a change. Uh, you can trace back at least to the metadata or landing page, the previous versions that might have been used, say, in a, in a paper. Um, but the availability is uh, kind of another issue because obviously that impinges on resources and, and other issues. I mean, I, I, I certainly think um, uh, most of the data managers would want to keep earlier versions in some form, even if the level of service is limited. This is actually not intended to be a in-depth comparison, but uh, really just uh, to highlight what some of the issues are in thinking about um, the data, GIOS data sharing and data management principles and the FAIR principles. Uh, so I, I'm assuming that most people have heard about FAIR. It, it came out a few years ago uh, and has a very nice uh, uh, acronym, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, uh, you can see what how they're defined uh, according to the, the GoFAIR organization, uh, which is uh, uh, online and uh, I think uh, well known in certainly in Europe and other parts of the world. Um, uh, well, what I will say is, uh, uh, you know, FAIR was, is aimed broadly at uh, the scientific community, uh, data and services. Um, so a, a quite a broad range of data in which, for example, there may be sensitive uh, personal data, there may be early experimental data, uh, both public and private funded research, both, you know, long tail, small to very large projects and diverse disciplines. And uh, I mean, I think it goes without saying that we all know that many disciplines are vary, shall we say, in the level of accessibility and consistency and how they manage their data. So the general idea that uh, bringing all sciences up to a consistent set of principles that uh, 
does work for all the different disciplines given, you know, reasonable constraints on access uh, uh, makes sense. And uh, 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 FAIR, I think, is, is helping um, in that process. What I think is important to remember is that the Earth observation community through GEO um, has uh, is working with a you know arguably a more limited variety of data and uh, has set a higher standard in some cases for both data access and uh, management. Um, as you dig into fair uh, uh, again there's uh, a number of uh, specific principles with the labels F1 through 4 and so forth. You see these here. And there's a lot, clearly a lot of overlap with the data management principles, um, but they're organized somewhat differently. Uh, so in the data sharing uh, working group now, the joint data sharing data management principles working group, we started a cross, what we're calling a crosswalk. It came out of some of the discussions at the Geo Data Technology Workshop earlier this year. Um, but uh, what I would argue is that uh, the FAIR doesn't really explicitly address the open access policies. It, it indirectly uh, comments on them when you read uh, the details uh, as interpreted partly by the Go FAIR pro project. Um, but FAIR does, you know, it, it gets, as I said, the mechanics of saying one should have a, a license, doesn't say open license, one should have a persistent identifier and so forth. So, um, uh, you know, the, the crosswalk is actually fairly complicated and may vary between disciplines. Um, for the Earth observation community, I think, the data sharing and data management principles uh, in some sense cover uh, even a broader set of data stewardship issues like uh, curation and, and preservation that, that I don't quite think FAIR, FAIR gets at. So uh, this is just uh, something that Bob Downs and I have uh, created. We've uh, done a little more digging into the comparisons, but uh, this just kind of gives a quick overview of, of some of the different issues addressed by the DSPs and DMPs versus versus FAIR. Um, so let me, uh, I realize that was really brief. Let me just uh, conclude by uh, kind of reemphasizing where I think uh, the open data sharing part uh, that GEO has adopted is, is really valuable. I mean, as we just saw from, the climate issues, uh, uh, you know, climate is now recognized as a crisis. Uh, we need rapid scientific progress. Uh, open data sharing facilitates that type of, uh, of um, openness, replicability, uh, speed, and really the trust and cooperation that people are sharing their data and not not trying to hide or hoard or bias uh, things. And that's really uh, critical these days. And we don't have time to, you know, have people duplicating their efforts. We need to build on data, put different data types together, uh, give uh, all stakeholders access to data so that they don't feel left behind or feel like they can't trust what is being done because, um, you know, the models don't incorporate all all reasonable sources of data and so forth. So, um, you know, I, I just think this is a key topic. It's, as Benta said, been one of the major accomplishments of the GEO community in, in the last 15 years. And um, I think uh, keeping uh, a focus uh, on, certainly for the Earth observation community on open access, which I would rate as being, uh, you know, above the standard set by FAIR uh, is really critical. There are clearly uh, a lot of different trade-offs uh, in terms of where to invest 
resources for, you know, gathering new data, uh, managing and preserving the data to these uh, increasingly rigorous standards um, and doing analysis and, and applications. And, uh, you know, I think it's all, it is part of that larger life cycle where, you know, one of the issues with thinking about the value of data sharing is to actually try to um, look at where the resources are, are needed, how that's obviously changing because of technology or not and uh, where to, um, uh, you know, balance the, the data gaps that need to be filled against, you know, new, new types of sensors and so forth. So that, those trade-offs are always going on. Uh, uh, you know, what we found is uh, uh, since the center, center I run is basically a soft money center is that we've been looking to, uh, different sources of funding outside traditional research uh, funding, which is, of course, limited uh, to support some of the necessary work. One of the areas that the data sharing people have worked in a lot is uh, legal interoperability and the use of uh, what's essentially a de facto standard, which is the Creative Commons licensing. Uh, we looked at a number of other approaches to open licensing, but uh, certainly Creative Commons was far ahead of anyone else in terms of having uh, machine readable licenses that were uh, validated in basically every uh, national jurisdiction around the world. So uh, that in particular in, in that area was is a standard that was recommended in the in um, uh, some of the various, both GEO and Research Data Alliance uh, activities. The, um, you know, all the other data management principles have, each of them have their own uh, set of standards. Uh, one that I, I know Bob Downs is working on is uh, a new set of trust principles which relate to the stewardship. Uh, those are still in development, uh, but, uh, you know, when we think, you know, we not only have to think about the data being persistent in the long run, we have to think about the institutions that hold the data okay. being there in the long run, because if they don't survive, then the data gets lost. And uh, so there's a whole parallel effort of, of thinking about long term uh, persistence and stewardship of trusted digital repositories. Mm -hmm.